When this modest institute for higher learning opened its doors to more than 200 students in the spring of 1882, the small eastern Washington town of Cheney would celebrate a dream come true. But as they say, that was then. What you'll find today after fast forwarding through 130 years of service and five different name changes is an institution that has evolved from a privately endowed teaching academy into a thriving comprehensive state university with over 12,000 students. It's a regional university that has captured national attention, not only for its red football field, but for what it delivers in the classroom. Currently, Eastern Washington University offers over 100 fields of study, including the STEM-related fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. Well, East Washington University, uh, under the leadership of uh, Dr. Rodolfo Arevalo, has been very committed to uh, STEM research, particularly as it relates to the health sciences and, and technology. A case in point, here at Eastern, over 30% of our students are majoring in a STEM-related field, uh, which is extremely high. To further promote interest in STEM-related coursework, the university became involved with FIRST, a nonprofit organization that for more than two decades has been devoted to helping young people discover and develop a passion for the STEM-related fields. In the past four years, Eastern has been the site for a number of FIRST LEGO League events designed for students ages 9 to 14. When you look at our baby boomers aging, there is a great need for folks in, in the STEM-related fields, and that is going to be the focus of the future workforce. So it is very much a need, and Eastern, I think, is, is keenly poised to address that need. And these competitions are really about creating future students. Looking to build on the success of First Lego League, Eastern decided this year to step up and be a regional host for a much larger event the first robotics competition, commonly referred to as the varsity sport for the mind. Robot! First Robotics is a robotics competition for high school kids. First is an acronym. It means for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. Two, one. Our goal is to inspire students to find their passion in life. And we hope that is in the field of science and technology. The first robotics competition started in New Hampshire in 1992 and has since grown to uh, include every state in the United States and several countries overseas. There are a total of 52 regional events just like this one and they're spread all across the world. Uh, each event will send six winners to the world championships. It's a real badge of honor for a team to advance from a regional contest like this to championship. We've got uh, 46 teams uh, signed up, and that's our maximum in this first year. Uh, we've got two teams from California, we've got teams from Montana, Idaho, Washington, uh, Oregon uh, coming in for this event. The schedule is, is quite robust. Uh, it is a two-day competition, but the students are here for three days. Uh, the first day is made up of testing and, and getting into their pit area, and then there are two days of actual competition. The rules for the competition this year are, are many, and uh, the rules can uh, relate to field of play rules, and then also design rules. Perfect! And it's the design rules that they spend a lot of time over the six weeks working a lot of late hours trying to fine tune and get everything exactly right. Whether you're a team member or a team mentor, take, take this wheel off. everyone generally agrees on what are the two most challenging aspects of the competition. I, don't know, I think the most difficult for us, for us was being able to finish the robot in the six week time period. It's not a lot of time, especially if you want to have a lot of cool sensors on there and be able to do a lot of cool stuff. Definitely getting the robot ready and running and everything on time because, you know, we've had a lot of problems, but we can always get them fixed, but it's just so stressful. We have six weeks to build this thing, so the design, the construction, and the testing has to happen in that six weeks. That sounds like a long time. That is not a long time. So inspection day is that is the is the toughest part. And just wondering, did we read everything correctly? Did we build the way we thought we could build? Um, and invariably, we don't. There's no team that doesn't violate one rule, um, not for lack of trying to get them correct. Once all the teams pass inspection and their robots are tagged ready to rumble, yeah! the much anticipated fun and excitement of the first robotics competition is set to be unleashed. So the atmosphere here is a combination of a rock concert and an NBA game. We've got excited teenagers. The cheering is immense uh, during the competition. These teens are excited to be here. They're enthused about the projects that they've built. They're very proud of the projects that they built, and they are really having a great time. Uh, this year's game is called Rebound Rumble. 
It's sort of a modified version of basketball. There are six robots on the field, two teams of three, red alliance and the blue alliance is what we call them, and each alliance works together as a unit uh, to compete against the other alliance. We have four baskets that the, the robots can shoot at. Um, in addition to that, um, in the middle of the field, we have a couple of bridges, and these bridges uh, balance. So the teams earn extra points by being able to balance with their teammates and actually, one of the bridges is used to balance with your competition, what we call the cooperation points. Um, and it just makes it uh, for a very exciting ending to a game. As with any tournament style competition, after two days of nonstop action, all that remained of the 46 teams that started were two three team alliances. Despite knowing they had already qualified for the first Robotics World Championships by making it to the final game, each alliance battled hard to earn a regional title. In the end, three teams would cut down the nets as the first ever Spokane Regional FRC champions. Yet during the award ceremony that followed to officially mark the end of the competition, it was easy to see that the first robotics competition is not about winning or losing. Because clearly, everyone who participates goes home a winner. And perhaps the biggest winner of all is the community at large. I would certainly recommend it, uh, especially if you're a student that's interested in going into a science, technology, or engineering career. This will give you skills that you won't encounter any place else, really, until you get into the workplace. This competition is probably the most friendly competition I've ever been to. It's pressure, but it's, you know, enjoyable pressure. What I enjoy the most is what you see behind me. The students are in there doing the work. The students are talking. They're enjoying the process. They've put their heart and soul into this machine and the program that runs it. When they go out on the floor and it's successful, that, there's, there's no way to describe it. It's, it's like, it's better than winning. For me, the reward is in the work. I, I enjoy doing the work and tinkering in those kind of projects, and I think for the kids, it's valuable for them to see the payoff of that work. Uh, having an event like this in your community is a huge win for all of the students and all of the volunteers. The students realize that they are much more capable than we give them credit for, and they really develop teamwork skills that are desperately needed in industry. A key role that a university plays in the life of a region is not just in education, but it's also in community service and outreach. And so Dr. Revelo and I and, uh, and other folks within the administration really see this opportunity as providing you know, community support and, and outreach. Because even though the majority of these students will not become Eastern students, our goal is just to make sure that they become somebody's students down the road. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.